Hello, welcome to Code Zero, a series of videos that explores the world of code. My name is Pragma. Have a great time learning about code. Hello, it's Dr. Abstract here at ZimJS.com, and we're in a special Code Zero where we're taking a look at why we use Zim. Let's take a look. In the beginning, there was the traditional text optimize box world of the DOM. That stands for Document Object Model, and it includes HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and jQuery to do more things. But it's all very boxy. So now, welcome to the Draw Optimized Freeform Graphical Canvas World with Zim. Woohoo! And Zim is powered by CreateJS, which gives us the BOM, the Bitmap Object Model. So that's a graphic, a bitmap, that we can change all the pixels of and we can put stuff anywhere. That's great! Woohoo! And CreateJS and Zim makes that easy for us. So here are the types of things we can make. We can make coloring apps. Cool, huh? And this is even for multi-user, so you can collectively color this together. We can do dynamic drawing, uh, pixel drawings, or smooth ribbons with damping. We can make puzzles with buttons and dials and sliders, all these components, and we can drag and drop things and do hit tests. We can swipe things and do parallax, Ooh, all that moves with the mouse or with scroll. We can make games for mobile or desktop with sound and data, and animations, tweens, sequences, sprite sheets. And these move and you click them and they can shoot, pachoom, pachoom, and moving backgrounds. Cool. Configurators for specifications, say if you want to plan your kitchen or avatars, what will the avatar look like when you go into space? Collages. I love collages. Interactive logos and ads. Here's the old Zim Tri site where you could drag these around and make shapes and pictures. It's fun. And here's an ad when you took the smiley face away. It would get sad because there's a little Zim logo underneath. And if you put it back, it gets happy. Aw. Now, how about this? Whoa. So we're going to take a look at interactive media, which is what we had just seen a bunch of examples for, and we're going to break it down into why, what, where, and how. So why do we make these things? Well, for information purposes, social, education, play, art, simulations, the world. And what do we make? Well, we primarily make sites, apps, and games. And there can be brochure sites or inter for more fully interactive sites. There's apps that are service apps or product apps. We'll come back to these as well. You note you have colors. Well, we've got some colors down below, so we'll come back and talk a little more. Text games, 2D and 3D. If we do 3D, we'll probably go to Unity. Where will we do these things? Well, on the web. We can do the mobile, or we can do physical computing, augmented reality. This is mixed reality and virtual reality, and that would be 3D, so probably not what we're doing. Um, and then how are we doing them? Well, we can do them with a text-optimized DOM, traditional HTML, with HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and jQuery. And these uh, work with assets like fluid text. The text wraps nicely. It's great for text stuff, and you can input text, etc. There's images, forms, tags we're working with, audio, video, and that's a little bit less integrated. Usually it's just a playing a video, um, or maybe having background sound, possibly, or sharing a sound. Actions. We are navigating through press and swipe. We're hiding and showing things. We animate some of the interfaces, and we submit stuff. So that's the text optimized side of the DOM. Very important, obviously, in this information age. There's many, many things, uh, billions of things made on the DOM. 
And now the new side is the BOM, the bitmap draw optimize side, where we have a new tag in HTML called the canvas tag. We still use JavaScript and then we use CreateJS to give us the BOM. That's the hierarchy and uh, the containers and the events that will handle that stuff. And then we've got Zim, which adds a bunch of extra stuff, much like jQuery added a bunch of extra stuff to the DOM. And the assets we're working with are fluid images. These images actually change. Text and components and containers, sound and animation, very integrated. As in if we make a game, for instance, where the sounds, if we press something, the sound happens right there and then. That tends to be more related to what we're doing. We can drag and drop, do hit tests. We're constantly scaling and rotating and animating. I mean, I went for years before I actually uh, rotated anything. I don't even know if I have ever rotated anything in the DOM, to tell you the truth. Um, we animate, we navigate as well, of course, and we add, remove things, cache and mask. So these are things that we tend to do on the draw optimize side of the BOM, the bitmap object model. Now up above, we've broken these into colors, which are probably better suited. So the site, if you're doing a brochure site that really isn't changing or is primarily showing information, then the DOM will most likely be what you want to use there. If it's interactive beyond navigation, then you might want to take a look at the BOM, the bitmap object model side. For apps, if you're doing a service app, like a listing of your latest news, etc., then you might want to use the DOM on that. If your app makes a product, say it's a drawing tool or something like that, then um, you're probably going to want to use the BOM for that. Games, if it's a text-based, fine on the DOM, but almost for sure, if it's a 2D game, you'll probably be wanting to use the, the BOM, the bitmap object model. Okay, let's see. Let's imagine that we are using the bitmap object model then. Let's take a look at the time it would take to build things. So, if we didn't have CreateJS and if we didn't have Zim, if we just had JavaScript, we would be given these things. Variables, conditionals, functions, and loops. In other words, the average uh, things that we use when we, when we code, when we program. That comes with the JavaScript language. And there's also the canvas and fill and strokes, lines and recs, curves and arcs. So the basics of drawing are there as well. However, CreateJS came along and made that much easier for us with the stage and containers and shapes. We, it also added things like bitmap, text, sounds, events, all the events to handle these things, tweens, a single hit test and various filters. So CreateJS comes along and gives us more and more consistent and as well as the events to, to work with that. That's the bomb. Zim then comes along and gives us com components and conveniences like buttons and panes, labels, sliders, dials, pickers, pads, tabs, grids, single line drag and drop, which is nice. Uh, that wasn't around here. We had to do a little bit more. Uh, multiple types of hit tests rather than just one hit test. Um, a sort of consistent way to animate, um, as well as some tricks there, although the animation is quite good in CreateJS alone. Shapes and frames, so a framework for all of this. And now that brings us up to when I coded in Flash, interactive media, and many people coded in Flash through, throughout almost 20 years, I guess, uh, 10, 15 years. Um, this is what we had. This was the infrastructure that we already had. We already had components and things. So you don't want to spend time building this. You want to spend time over actually building your app. The creativity and the UI, UX, the sketching of things, the assets, uh, preparing the assets, the steps and the logic, actually doing the code of, of your app. You don't want to build infrastructure. Um, you can make custom classes, you can debug, launch, all that kind of stuff needs to happen. Now, when I was working in Adobe, I had that, but I also still had 190 more custom classes that I had made to help me make interactive media efficiently. So Zim, uh, we got lucky, we got to take those and organize them and make them consistent, work together um, to give us controls for, for what we're working with. Things like um, how to go from multiple page to page, uh, layouts on the page, hot spots and swiping, damping, asynchronous calls, uh, various uh, the, all the scaling needed for that, scrolling, parallax, and more. A whole bunch more have been added since that time too. All right, so 
If you're building, if only with JavaScript, the time it would take is down here, this big long all the way to there. If you add CreateJS, the time is less because you don't have to do all this. CreateJS did it for you, so less time. And then if you add Zim, it's even less time. Zip! Isn't that good? Less time. Not only that, um, if you take a look, this is the type of thing that went into Zim. A thousand conditionals, 100 functions, 100 loops, 2,000 blocks of code, 100 add childs, 200 returns. Now you can distill that for less. It may be that you don't use all of that. That's a lot of stuff, and there's possibilities. If you're doing it yourself, that you could be there, well, spending a lot of time, of course, but maybe you'll do it wrong, or you won't have tested it very much. And Zim and CreateJS are very well tested. Yay! So you can spend time working on your app, and that's basically why we would use Zim and CreateJS, is so that we can efficiently make an app. It's easier. So Zim saved 200 lines of code on a 1,500-line puzzle. That was uh, back in Zim 1, so that's quite some time ago. It's probably better now. All right, what kind of support is there? That's another nice thing. Look at all this support. There's great documentation that opens up. It expands open. There's 64 Zim bits. That shows you very common, as many as I could think of, very common interactive techniques that we need. How do you drag and drop something and snap it in place? And you know, all these kinds of things. Um, there's also many, many tutorials in the Learn section. We did video tutorials as well, Zim Capture series that shows us how that we're working in Zim. And uh, we have a frame template as well. So nice, easy way to start in a variety of manners. And we're around on all of these places. Zim was programmed by this guy, this Canadian New Media Awards winner called Inventor Dan Zen. Jeez, I wonder who that guy is. All right, and uh, opportunities. Zim provides extra functionality to create JS much like jQuery provides extra functionality to JavaScript and HTML. So 80% of the top million sites use jQuery. That's uh, it's crazy. So uh, if you're using the Canvas, then hey, you certainly should be using Zim as well, I suspect. Anyway, it'll make things uh, a lot easier. And Zim is an official uh, tool on the CreateJS site, and CreateJS has been loaded billions of times. So, let's connect. If you want to sponsor, or promote, or actually code, that would be great. Code with Zim. Contribute to Zim. It's open source on GitHub. Uh, teach. Um, there's lessons for Zim and workshops for you to be able to teach, and I'd be more than happy to help as well, or any of us here at Zim. So, that's that. Oh, yes, I am Dr. Abstract here at ZimJS.com. Stay tuned for more Code Zeros. We love you and all the best. <laughs>